Davis, you just heard right there Joe Tecapina saying there's no way, zero chance that Trump will take a plea deal because he maintains his innocence that he did nothing wrong. Can you talk to us more about the legal ramifications to how the case could actually be thrown out because of the statute of limitations being first and foremost here? Well, yeah, I mean, there, there are several reasons. There's Soros-funded Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg previously pushed the Manhattan, the prior Manhattan DA to decline these charges. The Manhattan U.S. attorney declined these charges. The Federal Election Commission declined these charges. And the reason is, is there's no felony here. This is this is a bogus, trumped up felony. At best, what we're looking at is it are misdemeanors for bookkeeping errors that are never charged. And even the misdemeanors are stretched. Alvin Bragg has stretched those, convoluted the law, bootstrap federal and state law to come up apparently with some felony theory that's uh, that when Trump settled a nuisance claim back in 2016, somehow this was an illegal campaign finance violation under federal law that Alvin Bragg is going to charge under New York, New York law. This is bogus. And President Trump should not plead guilty because there's nothing to plead guilty to. There's a this is not a crime. It doesn't matter what evidence they come up with. This is not a crime. This is a bogus legal theory. That's a great point. Uh, let's go to Thane now. And Thane, I know you've been very outspoken about this, how they were doing some gymnastics to make some charges uh, stick. Uh, were you surprised that there were, or it's been reported that there might be more than 30 coming? We haven't seen that indictment. It hasn't been unsealed yet. Uh, but what do you make of potentially even a higher sentence? Or what do you make of how many of these charges could possibly be coming down? Well, John, one thing about to talk about more gymnastics or contortions, it might be that every month that Donald Trump paid uh, uh, Michael Cohen for his legal fees will be considered a count of a falsification of a business record. It's the only reason I can imagine 30 of them, right? He's essentially saying Michael Cohen wanted to be paid in one lump sum, but instead that he was being paid monthly. So every month constituted yet another violation. Again, it's a, it's a real contortion. It's the idea that these legal fees were in furtherance and concealment of a second crime, which was an undisclosed campaign by, uh, contribution, when in fact the money belonged to Donald Trump. It was his money. It didn't come as donated to him. And in the case of John Edwards as well, it's very hard to prove in this instance that he was trying to evade the campaign finance laws. It's far more likely he was trying to save his marriage and to avoid embarrassment. It, it, there's just so many legal hurdles from the statute of limitations to the fact that this was a misdemeanor at its outset. And it really just appears just to be about optics. It was always the weakest case. It's optics in the sense it's bad for the country. It's for people who hate Donald Trump. You get the money shot of him potentially being booked, handcuffed, fingerprinted. Uh, and for people who support him, they're going to say, you humiliated a presidential candidate who we wanted to vote for because you wanted to derail his campaign. Yeah. And all of that imagery could happen as soon as next Tuesday. Uh, so we know a lot of folks are tuning in and wondering what might happen next. Thanks for walking us through what we know so far. Mike Davis, Thane Rosenbaum, appreciate it, gentlemen. Take care. Anytime. Thank you.